Mesdames, Messieurs, chers amis, chers amis, bonsoir. C'est évidemment avec le plus grand plaisir que nous accueillons ce soir le docteur Mustapha Barghouti au Luxembourg. Thank you so much. This was a long introduction. I will have to speak in English, so excuse me for that. And uh, I want to start really by thanking the Committee for Just Peace in the Middle East for giving me this wonderful opportunity to see all of you and speak to all of you. It's a great honor for me to be here in Luxembourg, and uh, it's also a great honor for me to see people coming from France, from Germany, and from Belgium to attend this lecture. So thank you for making the effort. I believe that knowledge is the beginning of understanding any issue and of taking the right position about any issue. So the issue of Palestinian two-state solution is not new. Actually, it is uh, something that goes back to 1947, when United Nations have decided back then to establish two states in Palestine, a Jewish state in the white area and about 55% of the land, and a Palestinian state in the green area, which should have been 45% of the land. When Mr. Netanyahu speaks about recognizing Israel as a Jewish state, he omits the fact that that means he should go back to 1947. And in parallel to recognizing that state, he should recognize the Palestinian state. In 1948, without going into details, of course, then Palestinians considered this was an unjust solution, yet when Israel was established in 1948, it was not established on 55% of the land, it was established on 78%. And what remained was West Bank and Gaza representing only 22%, including East Jerusalem. Palestinians were calling for one state solution, one democratic state with equal rights for everybody. And the world community was telling us that you have to be realistic and accept a two-state solution. And that means accepting a state in the West Bank and Gaza. To our great surprise, when Arafat went to Camp David, this was the map he received from Mr. Barak. It was not a real state. It was an entity without borders, an entity without Jerusalem, and an entity without many areas that would still remain occupied by settlement, settlers and settlements. Something he could not accept, even with all the pragmatism he had, which made him sign uh, Oslo Agreement. Later, that concept was further developed by Sharon and later Olmert into this map, where Israel would keep the whole Jordan Valley, the areas around Jerusalem, And this is, the meaning, this is the meaning of Netanyahu's statements when he speaks about wanting to want peace, but on the basis of this map. That is the meaning of what Netanyahu says when he says, there will be no negotiations about issue of refugees, there will be no negotiations about Jerusalem, which has to remain unified, Jewish capital of Israel, There will be no negotiations about going back to 67 borders, and there will be no stop of settlement activities. So here is the story. I think this is something that is not known, that the idea of two-state solution started with offering Palestinians 45%, which went down to 22%, and we accepted that. And then it went back down to 18%, and then less than 11% of fragmented territory. Did this happen by accident? Or did it happen because we were too stubborn? Or did it happen because we were resisting occupation? No. It happened according to a plan. And this was the plan. 
The plan was developed back in 1967 by the Israeli then, the then Israeli Foreign Minister Yigal Alon, who developed this plan, which was called the Yigal Alon Plan, and it was approved by the Israeli government. And it was Israel's response to the fact that against their expectations, when they occupied West Bank and Gaza in 1967, Palestinians this time did not leave the country, did not flee. They remained, creating a serious demographic problem. And the Israeli response to the demographic problem was the creation of this map where Israel would build as many settlements as possible around Jerusalem, which was annexed, by the way, immediately after occupation, and then build so many settlements in the Jordan Valley and then later up in the north and in the south with the idea of fragmenting the Palestinian territory into clusters of uh, pantostans or ghettos, if you want, preventing it from becoming a contiguous, efficient, uh, proper state or structure. Then they developed a network of checkpoints or military uh, obstructions, barricades, all these checkpoints are meant to obstruct normal flow of movement in the occupied territories. And I put on the map only half of these checkpoints, because if I put them all, you will see a completely black map. And then they built the wall. This was the first stage of the wall. This is the second stage. In 85% of the time, the wall is built not on the borders between West Bank and Israel, but inside the occupied territories. Even when Oslo Agreement was signed in 1993, and then there was no military actions, there was a situation of so-called peace and peaceful negotiations. Even then, the map of Oslo that was drawn by the Israeli government never allowed any Palestinian control or presence in all these white territories on the map, which are called Area C. They allowed Palestinian Authority to be only in the dark areas, Area A, and Area B, Palestinians would have in Area B only functional authority, something like taking care of health or education, but not real authority. But the white area remained completely in the hand of the Israelis. Even after 16 years of Oslo agreement, none of that territory was transferred to the Palestinian Authority. And what shocked me most, that in 2002, when Israel started to build the wall, claiming that the wall was for security reasons, that the wall map, when you apply it to the Oslo map, which was done in 1994-95, if you apply the, Oslo map, the wall map to the Oslo map, you will see complete fit from the western side and complete fit from the eastern side. The only change is that they speak about these enclaves that would go inside to annex more settlements. And the final map of the so-called Palestinian state would look like this. Uh, I don't think such a map represents anything serious about being a state. The only map that looks like this is this one. This used to be the map of Pantostans in South Africa during apartheid time.